Hello everyone, my name is Zain and I'm a part of the marketing team at Order. Welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to talk about branding basics for your small business with the experts at Taylor Brand. In this webinar, we'll cover everything that you need to know from branding basics to thinking about your brand and we're also going to have a very short demo on how to use Taylor Brand to build assets for your social media, design your logo, build a brand book if you're working with different designers, and even how to build a website. Oh, and we also have an offer for you. You can get free access to Taylor Brand through Owner. So all you have to do is go to owner.co and create a free account to unlock your free access to Taylor Brand. And this way, you'll get free access to Taylor Brand's premium package for six months. So you can design your logo, you can design your social media assets, and you can even think about building a website all for free. Also, this webinar was pre-recorded for the best experience possible, but the team is live in the comments. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask those questions in the comment box and the team will respond. Welcome to the webinar, Natalie. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself before we get started. Sure. So um, my name is Natalie and I'm the head of communications at Taylor Brands. We're an AI logo design and branding platform for small and solo businesses. And pretty much for the past 10 to 15 years, I've been working with startups, um, helping them do their marketing, tell their stories and really grow their companies online. And so joining Taylor Brands was the perfect kind of extension of that. And Taylor Brands is, uh, like I said, it's an everything, an all-in-one branding platform. You can go onto the platform and create your logo. Uh, you can then use that logo for your website and for your social media designs and to print it on uh, really cool merchandise, put your brand online. Let's jump right in. Uh, let's, let's talk about branding. So branding for small businesses. Uh, so like I said, um, I work at Taylor Brands. We're an AI-powered logo design and branding platform for small and solo businesses. Uh, we work all over the world. We have over 14 million users. And pretty much you can come into the platform and using AI and machine learning and all these kind of like, you know, big technical terms. Really what it means is that you can come in and you can design or really create your own logo, which is usually done, you know, by people and costs a lot of money on your own. And then you can take that design and you can actually use it uh, within the platform to add it to your website and add it to your social media and print it on really cool merchandise. And the idea is that you're creating a complete brand, kind of an end to end branding solution for your small, a really small sum every month. Um, and it's do it yourself. So yeah, so we work with uh, companies all over the world, people that are selling products or services. And here's a short video uh, where you can see a little bit what we're about. Everything starts with a logo. Simply enter a few details about your business and our online logo maker will design the perfect logo for your brand. But it doesn't end there. We guarantee you will love your logo so much, you'll want to put it on everything. You can use it to create your own professional business cards, letterheads, and so much more. With our new Cutting Edge Editor tool, creating your social marketing materials has never been this easy. Choose backgrounds, play around with your logo, edit text and fonts, and decorate your design with icons or shapes. The possibilities are endless. Take your business to the next level with our end-to-end -end branding solution and join over 20 million happy customers worldwide. Design your logo today with Taylor Brands. So the first thing is what's a brand? So for a lot of people, this is a murky kind of amorphous concept, okay? So marketing is the equivalent of asking someone on a date and branding is the reason they say yes or no. So I think that we can all relate to this, okay? Uh, what we're doing when we're when we have a business um, and when we're you know dating whatever it is, we're asking people to buy from us, uh, to engage with us, to buy our services, etc. And you can give anybody you know explanation for why to do that, you know, and that's what we're all doing, right? We're we're sharing a lot of you know information about why your product is best or why your service is best. But when people interact with you um, or with your business, they feel certain things, okay, and they have perceptions of who you are. And at the end of the day, those feelings and those perceptions are the ultimate reason why they say yes or no to doing business with you or going on a date with you. And branding is shaping those perceptions because you want people to feel a certain thing, uh, generally positive things, but also very specific things. Um, and that's the actual process of branding. Okay. So I'll give you um, a little bit of an example. Uh, when I said, again, shaping perceptions, it's you want people to say yes, right? When you ask people to buy from you, 
um, or to, you know, use your services or whatever it is, the ultimate goal is for them to, to do that. Um, and so this is what um, I'll share a little bit about. So to give, um, kind of to go back to the previous example of like, you know, dating, um, I'll show you a little bit about what people are doing when they're actually engaging with uh, your company through this analogy. So let's say you have this person, right? John Snow, he's a high tech lawyer. And this person asks you out on a date, just like any ad or anything that you see online um, is asking you to visit their website or to, you know, buy their product. But what you do when, you know, someone like this asks you on a date or anybody does, you know, 99% of us are going to go online and we're going to research that person, uh, just like we're going to research that company. And we have a certain expectations, right? Because this person told us that he's a high tech lawyer and he loves dogs. So we expect certain things when we look for this person online. However, you know, when I go to this person's LinkedIn, all of a sudden he tells me, uh, it says that he's an accountant. So, you know, that's really strange because that's not what I expected to find. Um, and then I look at Facebook and I see that this photo is really different than the photo that, you know, he gave me on, you know, whatever app I was on. And again, I had a certain expectation and that expectation was not met. And again, in a conversation on Twitter or, you know, whatever social media platform, um, you know, he starts, you know, I see that he's saying that he actually doesn't like dogs and he's more of a cat person. So what happens now, right? You have this person, you have this expectation um, of what this person is going to provide you. The same thing that we have with businesses. Um, when the business shows you an ad or tells you, you know, when a person tells you about the kind of service that they're providing, you're forming expectations in your head about what that person will deliver. And then you go online and you look up that person or that business and you want those expectations to match. Because the thing that happens when they don't match, like in this case, when it's inconsistent, is that it leads to confusion. Because you're looking at this person and you're looking at this person's website or their social media and you're getting an incomplete picture. And when that happens, there's distrust, okay? You don't trust that this person is who they say they are, right? And the same thing happens with the business. You don't trust that that business is gonna provide you the value that they say they will. So everything comes down to trust and consistency. So this is also really important. You don't have a lot of time, okay? And this is what everyone, you know, when people are talking about, you know, uh, first impressions or things like that, or, you know, when you go to a website and you have two seconds to convince someone, um, it's not an exaggeration, okay? Because we make up our minds about whether to trust a person or trust a company in a matter of seconds. Again, it's a gut feeling. And that's what we're trying to shape when we talk about branding. So two things that are really important before we jump into how do you build this trust, because that's the core of building a brand that people actually want to do business with. Um, I want to show you two, I want to kind of bring to light two things. One thing is this person, right? This Jon Snow, um, if you asked him if he had a brand online, he probably would say no, right? Because he doesn't have a logo and he doesn't have his own website, you know, but, you know, you still have thoughts and feelings when you interact with wherever he shows up online, like on his social media or things like that. So you as a business, if you exist online, if you have a social media account, and especially if you're a solopreneur, meaning that you are the service that you're providing, um, and the business is generally around you, but it could also apply to anything. You have a brand, whether you know it or not. You have a brand, whether you have a logo or not, or whether you have a nice design or not, because your brand is your reputation. And people have thoughts and feelings about you and your business, whether or not you put any effort into that. Okay. So it's really important to remember that because a lot of people come to us and they're like, well, I just want to start building my brand. And I look them up online and I'm like, you have a brand. It's just not that great. Okay. But it exists. Um, and it could be hurting your business, um, you know, if you don't kind of take steps to improve it, which we'll cover in a second. And the second thing is that your brand is not what you think it is. So this Jon Snow guy could think that he's the most, you know, consistent, uh, awesome lawyer slash accountant or whatever it is uh, that he, you know, proclaims to be. But that doesn't matter because when it comes to a brand, it's what other people think about your business. And it's important because those are the people that are going to ultimately buy your service or product. So it's really important to realize that. And you can also notice it within yourself when you interact with companies. Um, what are your feelings about that company? So the big question here, so how do you create a great brand? How do you get people to say yes to your business, to your product or to your service? And like I mentioned before, I alluded to, it's about trust, okay? Um, this is kind of a different way of looking at branding. And I'll tell you why in a second. And it really forms the the kind of core reason why we even built Taylor Brands, okay? So when we say build trust through interactions, if you have 
a website or if you have a social media, but nobody is coming to it, then you know what I mean? Like no one's actually getting an impression of what your brand is. And if you do have social media and website and all that stuff, you want to, you know, and people are interacting with it. So that's an opportunity to build trust through every interaction that people have with you. And this extends again, if you're a solopreneur, this extends to every email that you send to customers, to every comment that you leave on a review site. It's all your reputation and it's all your brand. Okay. So this is kind of the, the thing that we noticed a lot. And it's kind of, like I said, informs a lot of what Taylor Brands does. So many people think, that what's going to improve their brand is spending hours, and I'm saying months, on creating the perfect logo, on creating the perfect design, over you know choosing the perfect filter for their perfect image and all that stuff, uh, the perfect personality for their brand, the perfect tone of voice. Those are all really important, but so many people are missing out on the actual piece that's going to get people to trust you and want to do business with you before they decide. You know if your personality is a uh, you know, cute or funny or whatever it is. Like, you know, that's kind of the second, the, the second step. What actually is going to build your brand, um, especially when you're just starting out, is you being clear, consistent, and competent. I use the word competent because it's a C and three Cs sounds really nice, but it's really about providing value. You want to show up as, as a company or as a business or as a person that's consistently providing value. Um, so when I say... Uh, clarity, right? Being clear. What I mean by that is that every time that someone comes in contact, that someone interacts with your business, which means whether they're interacting with you as a human in a, in a physical event, you know, which sounds crazy right now, but uh, even on Zoom and whenever you're introducing yourself, or when they come to your website, or when they come to your social media, they need to know exactly who you are, I'm Anne, a wellness coach. I don't know who Anne is, but that's my example for now. They need to know who do you serve specifically. Career-focused women who recently had, you know, whatever it is that your, your kind of niche is, they need to know what's your promise. What you're, you need, you're trying to get people from A to Z. That's what, you know, most companies are trying to do. Uh, we're going to make you healthier or richer or, you know, look more beautiful or whatever it is. And you need to be very clear about what your promise is. And this, the one, two, three, the fourth thing is what is your actual offer? So what do you offer people? What's the product? Is it a hair product or is it coaching or is it, um, you know, uh, I don't know, an appraisal for a house? You know, whatever it is, you need to know what your offer is. And this stuff gets really basic down here, but it's how can people contact you? And that's your email address or a content form or, or a contact form or your phone number or whatever it is. And then it's where are you located? This is not relevant to everybody, but you'd be surprised how many people offer service in a specific city. And yet when I look at their, their Facebook page, it, it's not clear that the only service, you know, uh, wedding people that want to get married in Austin, Texas. So what I'm actually saying here is that so many people focus again on creating really beautiful designs, but they're not focusing on making sure that every time someone comes in contact with their business, they know exactly what that person is doing, what's the offer and how they can contact them. Now, way down here is your logo and design. And I did that on purpose because it's not as important as nailing your pitch, your one-liner, what you're about, who you serve, and how people can contact you. Um, I can't say that enough because so many of the businesses that we work with, you know, you go to their website or you go to their social media and you have no idea what they're doing. And it's confusing. And you know what happens when people are confused? Yeah, they say no, because that's, that's what it says, but they just close the tab, you know? It's like less dramatic. They'll just go to someone else. So be very, very clear about this. And I am actually, I shared with uh, owner uh, like a kind of a, a cheat sheet that we have that really helps you kind of nail this down. And this is one of the smartest things you can do um, straight off the bat. So logo and design. Um, I am going to show you guys a demo of how to create your, your logo on Taylor Brands. Again, the purpose of Taylor Brands, you know, we want it to take you five minutes to create a logo and we want you to spend the rest of that hour focusing on this. That's the promise um, of Taylor Brands, right? to make this stuff easy so you can actually focus on the stuff that's going to move the needle in your business. Um, I'm going to take you guys to the Taylor Brands platform. I'm just going to do kind of a fake account. You can give owner a new logo. 
And I'll just show you really quickly um, how this works, how easy it is, some of the features, and then we'll go back to the other C's that we talked about. So um, I will, you know, type in owner. I don't know what your tagline is, so I'll leave it uh, like this. And that's it. You start with the process. Um, the first thing that the uh, system is going to ask of you, um, but then you can choose, you know, an icon. You can choose um, if you want it name based. You can also do skip, and then we'll give you like a mix of both. I like to do skip; it doesn't really matter. And here's the part where we start to understand kind of what your style is. Again, this takes like you know a couple minutes. Um, I'll just choose random things here, um, just so you can see how easy it is. And now the system is pretty much uh, taking all the input that you have based on the industry that you put in and the designs that you chose. And we take information from all over the internet about what are the trends in the specific industry um, and what designs will best match you. And then here we get a, you know, a bunch of different um, options. Some of them are better than others. Let's say if I want this logo, um, you know, this is just a starting point. Go in and you can customize this. And there are a ton of options um, for how to change you know, what shape um, the actual logo is going to be. Um, you know, if you want it to be like a, you know, I don't know, this like circle, let's say, and then you can go uh, into the type and you can change, you know, the style um, of the of the text. Um, you know, if you want it thin or not, and then you can come in and you can change the font and you can really play around with almost like every aspect of this. Uh, we did shapes. You can also change the color, obviously, by like, you know, pa uh, palettes of like colors that go well together. Um, and you can, you know, decide if you want like a combination of colors and all this stuff. Um, and this is really cool. I mean, people can, you know, spend hours doing this because you can always go back and choose a different logo. You know, you can create a new logo here if you didn't want, you know, you didn't like these options. Uh, the important thing is, is that, you know, we're it, because it's a tech solution, there's like, you know, millions of designs and com combinations. So the more you try it, the more you'll see that there's different options. Um, and then you'll do finish. Uh, you can always keep editing if you want, but I'll just do finish. And the problem is free. Uh, so when you first uh, enter into the, the, this kind of version, you'll get a free version, but it's limited. So you can't, you know, if you want to download your logo in a high quality file, you'll have to upgrade. But you can definitely, you know, start playing around. Um, you can create your kind of brand theme uh, for your social media. And, you know, I'll give you guys a little bit of examples. It's pretty like self-explanatory. You know, you can choose, let's say, if you want this like cool um, background for your posts, then all of a sudden you'll see that you have all these different templates with this background. And then you can just add photos, images, um, you know, different types of quotes that people like. You can kind of choose uh, what kind of font you want. And then you can come here and you already have this brand theme. So every time that you want to do a social uh, post, you can have this. So this is a really big part of um, here. I'll do this final thing and then we can go back to the actual presentation. So as you can see, you can easily do, um, you know, an Instagram post and all of them are going to be branded according to whatever style you chose. And you can clearly, you know, you can always replace the theme with a new one. Um, you know, you have a lot of options for like different, you know, kind of designs that you want, um, you know, a bunch of like kind of ideas, um, you know, different kind of, you know, messages that you want, um, et cetera. And all of these are customizable. And again, if you want some of the premium templates, you do have to upgrade, but it gives you a good kind of feel for what you can do here. Um, and then you can always get out of here and you can also build a website um, with your brands. Again, the website will come with your logo already on it. It's here on the left. Um, you know, you can choose from one of our templates or you can actually have, you know, our, our website builder kind of create a website for you. It's really basic, but it'll definitely do the first few pages um, and get you started. You can get your business domain. Um, again, when you're talking about building trust, having your own domain name is a really important way to, to build trust. And building trust, again, the whole idea is that people know that when they buy something from you, if you're going to provide the value you say you will. Um, a lot of times when we see websites and the design is off and all that, what we're is like, we're about to give this person money and we don't really believe that we're going to get what and that from happening clearly. Um, again, you can come here, you can print, um, you know, your logo on really cool business and dice, et cetera. So, um, you know, you, you guys all get six months free um, through our partner.
So I, I really suggest you coming in here. You can play around, you can use the coupon and you can create some really incredible things um, in six months for your brand. Natalie, mm-hmm. before we move forward, uh, just a couple yeah. of questions. Uh, this is sure. fantastic. Like being able to go through the entire thing in like a couple minutes and like getting a logo done super fast. And it also fits in super nicely with like, hey, you know, yes, logo and design is very important, but like also figure out like who you are and like who do you serve. Uh, in terms of the files that you export, and I'm sure uh, we'll cover more details like uh, later in this webinar, uh, in terms of the exports that you get, um, what sort of uh, image uh, files uh, that people can download? Is it like a vector that they can download or is it like... Sure. Yeah. So right now I'm actually on the, the free account because I wanted to show the entire funnel, but I'll show uh, you everything that you get. So uh, when we're talking about logo versions, these are the JPEG and the PNG. So these files are usually used, um, you know, for anything for social media, for kind of invoicing and all those things that you want to create. These are kind of the standard logo files that you get when you um, get, you know, if you get your six months free, you'll be able to download these um, and save them. And you have them forever. You know, the minute they're on your computer, it's your logo and and that, that's it. Um, so you'll get that. You get logo sizes for various social media. So a really important, well, I talk about it in a second when I talk about consistency. Um, but really it's so easy. You know, once you have a high resolution file of your logo, I can't tell you enough how many times we see people with blurry logos and it's so unprofessional. Don't do it. You know, make sure you're getting the right sizes, review what you're doing and and make sure it looks good. And that's why this tool is super helpful because you'll just get it for Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or wherever you are. Um, and it's guaranteed to look great. Um, and then we have the vector EPS. So the vector EPS, and this is a file that you know doesn't matter how much you stretch it, how big you make it, how small you make it, it never loses quality. And so this is kind of a file that it's good for for various things. One is if you want to print anything. So if you're a lot of people that we have, you know, that are on our platform, print packaging for products. So that could be anything from like really kind of elaborate um, packaging that they can just you know put their logo and stuff that we don't have in our print store that they're doing custom. Um, that can definitely work. People that want to put their logo on like a huge, not really a billboard, but like a storefront. Um, this is the perfect file for it. It's also a really good file if you ever want to make changes to your logo in the future. Um, so that's okay. You know, people do that. It's not the end of the world. Don't logo because it'll probably change. Um, and then once you have this file, which again, you download and you keep forever, then you can, this is the file that designers use. So a designer can come in and let's say you want to change your color or your tagline. That's something that happens a lot. People don't are kind of over the tagline. Um, and so you can just really quickly go in there, a designer can make changes and your logo stays exactly the same as it was before. They don't need to recreate it, um, is the point of that. And then we also have these holiday logos. So these are kind of, you know, if it's Christmas, you can get your logo with like, you know, as you can see on the business card, you can get, um, you know, it with like a really cool theme. Um, again, it's like for pretty much any national holiday, um, you'll have kind of a logo theme for it. Um, and then you'll have your business cards. So that's part of the have our own templates. You can kind of do it yourself. Um, you can get your brand book. So this is like, you know, this is nice. It's, um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those files that, you know, people get really excited about because it is really cool, right? To see like all the different combinations, um, how your logo looks. Like this is really important if you are working with a designer uh, in the future. Or let's say that you want to right now, you know, you, you have this perfect logo and you want to, you know, make like a uh, bottles, right? Like water bottles and you want the water bottles, water bottles to be the color of the logo. So like you have all this information here, you know, you go to a print store, you have the color, that's the bottle and you know, the logo will be white or whatever you decide. Um, again, it will give you some like, you know, common like best practice logo, um, you know, the wrong ways to use your logo. <laughs> um, and yeah, and some mock-ups. So it'll show you how, you know, your logo will look on, you know, like on mobile or some cool tags and things like that. If you want like a cup or, you know, a book or whatever it is. Um, so that's the brand book. It's, it's, a, it's a very cool kind of a feature that we have. And then you also get business decks and presentations. So a really big part, obviously, when you're starting off your business, um, definitely uh, business decks also includes invoice, invoices, by the way. So and the easiest way to stand out from anybody is to get a high, again, if you have a bad looking logo, then don't have a logo because that just shows that you don't care enough about your business to make sure it looks good. And people's reaction to that is that if you don't care enough about your 
you probably don't care enough about the kind of service you're providing me. Um, it sounds a little harsh, but again, this is all subconscious. This is how our minds work. So if you have your high resolution logo, put it everywhere. It should be on your invoice. It should be on your presentations. It should be on every proposal that goes out. It should be on your email signature. Um, again, like this is, this is who you are. This is your brand. And once you start a business, everything is your brand. Every interaction is your brand. Um, so this makes it really easy to do that. And I think that's it. So these are, hope they answered your question. <laughs> no, this is, this is fantastic. Even though I have cool. gone through Taylor Brand, I had no idea what all these little things that, that people can get, uh, especially, yeah. the, you know, the brand book, you know, for, for people like working with designers, like if you want to answer some of the, uh, the design stuff, let's just say if somebody's working with a website builder, uh, then these kind of things would be super important. So the designer can actually take that and uh, make sure that everything is working in, in accordance with the, with the brand guidelines. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like, again, the idea here is that you spend most of your time kind of working on the actual business and kind of leave the design and all this stuff like to us, you know, uh, so you can focus on the more important things. And, and just um, a reminder yeah. to everybody watching, um, if you sign up for an owner account and log in and press the Taylor brand button, you will get free access to all the upgraded features uh, on the premium plan for six months. So, um, so yes, I showed you all pretty much how to do what I'm talking about here, which is be consistent uh, using the Taylor Brands platform. But uh, again, what we're trying to do here, just to kind of remind you, is that you're trying to build trust through every interaction that you have with a customer. Um, this is now about strengthening your existing brand because you already have a brand if you're already interacting with people online. And again, the easiest way to do this, it really depends on your business. So if you're an online business, it's pretty clear. You probably have a website or social media. You have email. You may or may not have invoicing uh, invoices and files. You may have a LinkedIn profile. You may have an Instagram, you know, like we said, social media, an Instagram account. You may also be on review sites, right? And every review site, um, if you're, you know, featured on there, your business can be featured on there. There's going to be a place for you to write who you are and what you're about. And there's going to be a place for your logo. And there's probably going to be a place for pictures. Um, Google my business. That's a really important place. All of these places have to tell the same story. They have to. The story can change. Um, no one has the same story forever. And that's totally fine. The important thing is, is that no one is confused about who you are and what you do. Okay. I am keep going back to that point because it's such an easy win. And a lot of people don't do it. Um, so that's really important. And again, your contact information. So if you have your website, make sure that that's linking to all your social media and your Google My Business account and your, um, you know, wherever else you exist, make sure that everything is connected. Don't make people work hard to contact you and to get to know you better. Okay. That's really, really important. Um, and again, if you are a local business, make sure to include that. That's really important because you don't want to waste people's time if they can't get services from you then, you know, like, let them know that right away. Um, so yeah, and then again, Seth Godin, like, you only get a brand through interactions. Um, and it's the same thing with people, right? Like, you build a reputation. Um, if you have a, you know, obviously, we have, you know, people that are, you know, celebrities, and you don't know them, and, and they have a reputation. But most people, you get a feel for them, the more time you spend with them, and the more you learn about them. It's the same thing. Um, and this is the kind of third C. And this is really important, because we're talking about showing up, okay? And obviously on your website and social media and all that stuff, um, you know, you're having, you have this like consistent story and that's really, really important. And the way you do that is that when someone goes to your website, you want to feature content um, again, or like it says here, or testimonials that attest to the fact that you're an expert, because the point here is to build trust and shape perception. And you want people to trust you and also want to work with you because you're an expert, because you're an authority. So that's really important. Even on your social media, think about it. When someone's coming to your social media, they know your story, but are they seeing that you're providing valuable content? Are they seeing that you are, you know, answering people's comments? Again, everything matters in this day and age. Uh, everything. I can't uh, stress that enough and get testimonials. Um, you know, people like get people to and, and feature them on your website and feature them wherever you can um, so that you can get kind of that third party validation um, that, that really boosts your credibility. Um, so these are the kind of the three ways to kind of look at everywhere you exist right now and make it better. OK, we're not even talking about growing your brand. That's the second part. 
Um, so again, just kind of reiterating this, step one is build trust by being clear, consistent, and competent. And step two is show up clear, clearly, consistently, and you know, competently <laughs> in every interaction that you have. So up until now, we talked about, uh, you know, strengthening your brand through your existing interactions um, that, you know, are already kind of out there. Uh, now I want to talk about, you know, how do you build a brand? You increase the amount of times that, you know, people hear uh, about your business, right? So it could be the same people, how often they hear about it. And it obviously could be new people. Uh, we're talking about both here. So this is going to be pretty... Um, short. It's, you know, obviously this is like, this could be a whole presentation in and of itself, but I'll just like give you some tips for how to think about increasing your kind of presence and your visibility um, on the channels that you already have. So a num like when you're thinking about, you know, content, everyone talks about content. What we're really saying, you know, when we say content is that, you know, you, and the content could be a social media post. It doesn't have to be a long blog article. It's just something, an opinion or a thought or, you know, valuable information, whatever it is that you're sharing. And like we said before, the more valuable it is, the better it makes you look. Uh, it obviously provides value and it all, that's a win-win. So content creation though, takes a lot of time. It's really hard. And a lot of us don't have all the resources to do it. And so when you do do it, when you do decide to write something, which I do recommend, there are some ways to kind of, you know, make the process just work for you better. Um, so I'll give you an example, like, and, and we'll go through this. Um, let me just see. Okay. So one thing is that usually what people do is they'll have like an idea for a blog post and then they'll write the blog post and then they'll post the post. Right. And pretty much what that ends up happening is you have one interaction, you have posting the blog post and we're in the game of being increasing your visibility. So if you do that, you know how many blog posts you're going to have to write so that you can always have content on your social media? Like that's a lot of work. Um, and the worst thing you could do is say it's so much work and then kind of, you know, create mediocre content because then you're, that's hurting your brand. So that's, we don't want to do that. We just want to be able to kind of hack um, content creation so that you're also increasing your visibility in the process. And this is from a lot of, uh, uh, we do a lot of these uh, influence in interviews with influencers, like people who are, you know, really helping other people build businesses. So these are some of their top tips is you're thinking about writing a, a blog article. Do not wait till the article is written to post it on your social media. Document the process and use it as a way to engage your community. So if you want to write an article right now about how, uh, I don't know, COVID is affecting. Um, oh, in this case, I remember now it's co how COVID is affecting the wedding industry. So again, you could sit there and do a lot of research and then just present it, or you can go into groups. Again, this is if you're a wedding photographer or you're in the wedding industry, obviously you would only do something that's relevant to you, but go into groups and ask people and do polls and show up um, as you're gathering information, because that's what people remember. Okay. People are going to remember, oh, that's the person that asked, did this survey. And so not only are you showing up um, as an expert, as someone who's interested in this, so that people can make connections and be like, oh yeah, you know, Jill is, uh, is related to weddings. I don't know what she does, but I remember that there's an association there. But you're also getting information that actually is important because it can't stress enough how what your customers want and need and think and feel is the most important thing. It's like a treasure trove of information that a lot of us kind of don't really access till it's too late in the game. So involve people in the process. And if you're thinking about writing a blog about wedding planning, then just do one blog post. That's one fact from your blog. And then do another, not a blog post, sorry, like a social post. That's one fact from your blog. And do a second social post. That's a second fact from your blog. You know what I mean? Like take this information and spread it out and make it as visible as possible. And that's going to really like help you create content because on social media, if you don't, if you're not creating content, no one's following you. Um, so that's really important. Um, okay. So this is kind of, is it relevant? I'm not actually sure if that's the best title, but it's really a way of like, before you're even writing it, making, you know, putting it out there so that you're getting feedback and you're uh, engaging people in the process. The second thing is always think about, okay, if you're writing a blog post and you're writing about, you know, wedding venues in Austin or something, um, a lot of people will just kind of mention some names and, and that's it. But use the actual content and make sure in a way, I mean, obviously not every piece of content this is going to be relevant for, but 
but tag other people that are in your industry. So again, if you're in, if you're a wedding photographer, then obviously a wedding planner is very relevant. You guys have the same target audience. So when you're thinking about writing content, also think about when the moment when you want to post the content, how do you make sure that you can tag people that have really big followings? Like, again, it's a hack because you can only rely on your following and you might have, you know, a hundred people or 200 people and that's it. But if you tag this wedding venue, then they have another 500 people. And that's how you increase your reach. And again, what is that doing? More interactions, more people know about you and hear about you. And you're already doing the work. So hack it by also making sure that you have an easy way to distribute it, to leverage other people's audiences. That's like kind of the name of the, name of the game here. Um, the third thing is, okay, so now you have this blog post, right? And a lot of people will write a blog post, they'll put it on their blog and it, and it exists on the blog and that's really cool, right? And that's awesome and, and fine. But another kind of hack is you wanna create a resource that shows that you're an expert. Again, you already did the work, you already wrote the blog post. So now you're just taking information from that blog post and you're gonna create a resource. You're gonna create the ultimate checklist for planning a, a post COVID wedding, okay? And this thing is gonna take you 10, 15 minutes to make because you already wrote the content. But now you have it in a format of a PDF so that when you're talking to a new client, you know, and you're, you know, kind of sharing a, an invoice or whatever it is, you can do in the PS, here's a, a, a checklist that I wrote, you know, for you. And what do you think that makes someone feel? It makes them feel that you know what you're talking about and that you're an expert. And when you have a link to this PDF or whatever it is on your website or on your social, or you're giving it away as part of your uh, email when you're first engaging with someone or whatever, just like I did here, I have a, a, a PDF about building a brand that's gonna help our company, it's timeless. And it's always gonna be a tool that we can use to give value and show up as experts. Um, and so that's like another way to think about it. The whole idea is that when you're doing the work, make sure you're thinking about how to leverage certain aspects of it over time. Uh, so this is like another kind of good uh, kind of trick to do it. Not trick, but like a good hack for, for how to do this. Um, and I think, oh, and then this part is a little bit separate, um, but it's also really important to, to mention. So you can say that you're an expert, right? And a lot of people have no problem saying that they're experts. Um, you know, you can have some content to, to prove it and you can have a checklist and you can have, you know, testimonials and things like that. But at the end of the day, we all want third party validation. So when you're writing an article, it's like it's a really, really good way to build your brand in a in a strong, you know, great, healthy way is if you're already writing something is to submit it to local to other blogs, get other people. And to be honest, it doesn't even matter how big their following is. Um, that actually doesn't matter that much as long as it's not blatantly like inappropriate or shady or whatever it is like clearly there's some common sense there but you'd be surprised how just having your article featured on another wedding planner's blog it doesn't matter what it is the person we're talking about perception this is what it's the game of perception people perceive you as being an expert because they're comparing you to another and again i'm stuck on this wedding photographer um example but they're comparing you to another wedding photographer who doesn't have an article on whatever magazine. And so in a second, someone will just say, you know, I'd rather do business with this person. This person knows what, you know, he or she is talking about. So think about these things. Um, whenever you're creating content, whenever you're thinking about, um, you know, what the next step is, you know, for your business and, and what's the next thing you want to write or, or something like that. Um, these are really kind of like smart ways um, without spending too much time. Um, and that's about it. So to, again, I mean, just to reiterate kind of what I've been saying this entire time is, you know, it's, uh, it's about trust and it's about the interactions we have with customers. It's about strengthening the existing interactions that you have because you already have a reputation. You just want to make it better. And then it's about using content and social and PR to grow your brand by getting more people to know about you. Um, and then you can use kind of the, the points that I, that I shared. Great. Well, this has been super helpful uh i personally learned a lot of things not only yeah, about, great. but also uh some fun ways to promote different types of businesses like wedding photography businesses yes. uh, <laughs> let's uh let's jump over to some of the questions that people have sent over and 
uh, and take up those questions. And for those watching, anytime we do a webinar, uh, we always ask you guys to add questions so, so we can take up those questions during the webinar recording. Uh, that's if we're pre-recording it, but we're also available in chat. So if you have any questions right now, you can just type it in chat and uh, Natalie and the owner team will be here to answer any questions that you guys have directly in the chat. So the first question that we got, and I'm sure a lot of people have this question is, what is the best way to select a logo? Like, you know, especially somebody who doesn't know a lot about design, you know, even with Taylor Brands, even though we have AI's powers and the options are similar to the industry and what people have selected, it still turns out a few options. Um, how, what would you recommend in terms of like choosing a logo? Like how would somebody who doesn't know a lot about design go about choosing the right logo for the business? Sure. Um, that's actually a great question. And you're right. We do get this a lot. Um, a lot of people may not like this answer, but, um, this is kind of, you know, this is how it works. Um, is that it's, first of all, it's totally based on your taste. Um, so obviously go through it and see kind of what, you know, have an idea of, you know, a lot, it depends kind of how you're approaching it. Some people have like a very clear idea about, about the kind of logo that they want. And some people are just kind of free form. So really, you know, explore, look at as many options as you can. The cool thing about Taylor Brands is that it's going to save every option that you've looked at. And I would do this for, I would literally put a timer on maybe for like even an hour, 45 minutes, whatever it is, let your brain kind of go big and don't get stuck on any design, explore, go back, change it, really give yourself a lot of freedom and space to get creative because it's a creative process and it's your business and it should be fun. And like, you know, not, you know, don't, don't be stressed out about it. A lot of people are so stressed out, like, oh my gosh. Um, so try to have fun. A timer is good because then, you know, you have kind of like a framework for how long you have for this. And then what we always tell people is, you know, go back to the logos that you, so it'll save them and then go back to the logos and choose like, you know, three or five, not more than five, but let's do like three or five logos and share them with friends. Um, a lot of people that we have actually, and I think that again, it's part of documenting the entire process. So we have business owners that already have communities um, and they've kind of had this like slapstick yo logo that they created, you know, 10 years ago or, or whatever it is. And they'll actually share the new options that they thought of with their community and they'll do a poll and they'll get ideas um, for what people think. And it doesn't mean you have to go with it. Um, but it is kind of, you know, some trends can come out of that, that maybe things that you missed. So in short, like really go by your, you know, let your creativity kind of lead you trust yourself. Like most of the time it's going to be great. Um, you know, we see low, we see all the logos that are created and most of the time they're great. <laughs> so it's, you know, chances are yours is going to look good and then get some of the validation from people that you trust and your community. If you already have one um, of your customers. Um, cause there could be some things that you missed. Um, so, so that's like a good thing to get. Um, and that's it. And really don't spend too much time on it. The cost of an error is so low because you're creating a logo. You're not now, you know, creating, I don't know, an entire, I can't even think of an example of something that, you know, that, that would be so horrible if you made a mistake. People change that. We have companies that are doing a rebrand every year. Um, you can always change it. Speaking of mistakes, um the second question that that we got is uh have you seen a lot of people making like very common mistakes when when working on their brand and uh, what are some of those mistakes that people don't realize like as they're thinking about designing a logo or as they're thinking about like starting to build a brand for the business sure so the number one mistake is is spending too much time on it <laughs> on like creating the logo and the design that's probably the number one thing um no but number two is um or whatever next mistakes are Keep it simple. Um, you know, a lot of people think that the logo needs to be everything that their business represents. And the tagline has to be exactly what they want and all this stuff. And our uh, really our advice most of the time, it's also the trend nowadays, you know, like really think about how much information and text and images and all this stuff that we have when we're floating through the web and how nice it is to see something that's simple and clean and clear. Um, that's really the trend of, of design in general, definitely when it comes to logos and graphic design and all that stuff. So really think clear and simple and clean. And the tagline, unless it's like really short and amazing, I would probably not do a tagline. It just makes it look messy. And, and it's kind of like, you know, 
we're not people don't like it doesn't resonate with that with people so much anymore this kind of like really messy um design and when it comes to building your brand um it's pretty much like kind of what i said is that people focus so much on the design that they're not focusing on being super clear about who they are and who they serve and they want to serve because they're not super clear about who they serve and again who you serve cannot be all women 18 to 24. like those days are gone um you know unless you're amazon and then you know everyone is your your target audience um you need to be very clear and the mistake that people make is that they're not very clear and they're trying to market or communicate to everybody and they're not seeing results because they're not articulating um, how they can uni- how they're uniquely positioned to help this specific group of people um, and i think that's where people get lost for for those people who are just starting in and they're thinking about branding they're thinking about you know marketing is there a place that you recommend that they can go for inspiration? Like, is there something on Taylorbrand.com or are there different brands that you that you would recommend for these people? Like, we're just starting off and they just want to know, like, hey, what's what are some of the things that everybody else is doing? And I want to see, like, how I can maybe, you know, take inspiration from them. So um, I'm so happy you asked that because we actually have an article um, about this coming up. So we have content on Taylor Brands that will help you, you know, with design and branding and small businesses. And it's excellent content. And obviously, you know, Go and I'm sure Owner has some like really helpful stuff as well. Um, However, we live in this like really incredible time. I don't know, it's like age myself, but, you know, there's so many people out there, um, influencers, people that have built their own businesses and are creating amazing content for free. Um, you know, they have their programs and stuff they have to pay for, but the free content is really, really excellent. And it can be for any business that you want to build. And we're actually coming out with a blog post next week of like, who are like six of these influencers that we really recommend everyone follow. So one of the people that um, I recommend to everyone is someone called Marie uh, Forleo. So she is a, you know, she helps people build their businesses. She has like programs and things like that, but she need in terms of strategy, growing on social media, um, anything. And, and I highly, highly recommend her. And then there's also uh, someone called Gary Vaynerchuk, if uh, you all know him. And that's a really, he has a really good perspective on, on content and how to create content and how to repurpose content. And again, the list goes on. There's amazing people. Um, I will, and I highly suggest that you find that just like you want to be a very specific solution for your customers, when you're looking for someone to follow, find that very specific person that, that really speaks to you and your style. Everyone has a different style. Um, and so find your tribe of, of business owners that you want to emulate because everyone has a different way of doing it. Um, so yes, I'll share that information and, and there's a ton out there. Amazing. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely link that article that's coming up in Taylor Brand in the description. And we'll also add some resources that owner has worked on on like helping people understand like branding and uh, how to think about like promoting your business. Yeah, um, the next question is, how is Taylor Brand different from all the other AI um, logo builders? Um, yeah, uh, it's a great question. So we're different on two uh, fronts. So the first front is that, um, so a lot of the logo makers online actually are using templates. So they have a lot of, a template is pretty much just like, you know, they have specific designs of logos and you'll just come in and you'll see all these designs of logos and you might just like tweak color or, or change something. Um, and that's, you know, that's really cool. And like some of them are great. Um, however, most of the, a lot of the time, um, it just might not look as sharp or clear or modern or professional. Um, and again, it depends on your style. You might like that. And that's great. Taylor brands, on the other hand, we do not use templates for our logos. So that means that every logo is kind of created, you know, obviously created as a, as a loaded word here. It's an algorithm that's like, you know, crunching data and numbers and all that, you know, fun stuff to really create a logo from scratch. And it's really based on design trends and industry trends. So the more customers we have that are creating logos, the more customers that we have that are buying logos and using the logos, the more information we have about what people like and what people don't like. And the more we know what industry, just like I had to type in, you know, that owner is a consulting industry, then you know, obviously a consulting logo is going to be different than a construction logo or a beauty. That's also pulling information from these industries and seeing what works specific to your industry. Um, and so that, you know, at the end, the end result is hopefully a logo that's more modern, 
uh, clean, you know, looks more professional um, than another one. And the second uh, reason we're, you know, different is because a lot of the, you know, again, there are some other platforms that provide this, um, but, you know, compared, I guess, to like other brands, we, we do have this full all-in-one branding suite. So it's not just creating the logo, it's giving you an asset that you can then very easily add to your website and your social media and your, you know, and create your domain and print it on merchandise. So just a all in one place to do all of your kind of creative branding, uh, marketing, you know, stuff. Um, so that's a, a big advantage. Amazing. Well, this is all we have in terms of questions at the moment. Cool. I'm sure people will have more questions in the live chat. And again, as a reminder to everybody, you can ask any questions and we're around and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Thank you again for attending today's webinar. We hope that you learned something new. Before you go, I just want to remind you that there is a free offer. So if you're looking to design a logo or build assets for your social media, or if you're just thinking about starting a brand, you can create a free account on owner.co and then claim the free offer from the dashboard. What that does is it unlocks free access to Taylor Brand's premium package for six months. Also, if you have any feedback, you can always leave a comment down below. And if you would like to request new topics, you can still leave a comment or send us an email to marketing at owner.com. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you soon.